Uh, thank you so much. My name is Matt Landon, and these are my official comments for this evening uh, on March uh, 24th, 2014. Uh, I'm representing the Vancouver Action Network, and I would like to thank the city council members who have publicly opposed the oil terminal. So thank you so much. Uh, I am submitting these official comments tonight on to Jeff Swanson of Clark County Government and Brian Snodgrass of the City of Vancouver, who both sit on the FSEC board. I have concerns about the unmonitored air emissions coming from the black crude oil trains. This off-gassing is referred to as burping by the industry and regulators. These burps have not been included in any of the scoping comments received and are not included in the permit application. I'm asking that the total hydrocarbon contents of, for all of these burps be included in the FSEC process. It has been documented that the Bakken oil shippers are choosing to leave up to six times more propane and other gases in their crude oil to fluff it up, meaning instead of putting just 100% crude oil into the rail cars, they're putting in theory 75% oil and 25% gas, hence exploding crude oil cars. The DOT 111 and DOT 111A rail cars are only allowed to haul liquid hazardous materials, not gas. Propane can only be hauled in pressurized cars with pressure relief valves set to uh, 280 PSI. Crude oil cars are not pressurized and released at 75 PSI. If you own a propane company, you could not put propane into the black crude cars, but the oil companies are doing it every day illegally. This has to stop now. The Tesoro Savage permit falsely states that mobile sources of pollution, the train engine only, are regulated by other agencies and can't be included in their permit application. They're proposing to heat 30 oil cars at a time to make the oil floor flow more quickly, which renders them immobile. We all know what happens when you heat gas. It expands. There will be even more unburned hydrocarbons exiting through the pressure relief valves, which will need to be accounted for in the air pollution permit application, which will make granting it impossible. These oil rail car emissions are not monitored by anyone. The Department of Transportation and Federal Railroad Administration have laws which prohibit their rail safety inspectors from using scientific equipment to monitor these oil train emissions. Reference 49 CFR 173.24B1. Hence, no emissions data and baseline monitoring will have, uh, hence, there's no emissions data which exists and baseline monitoring will have to begin immediately. These unmonitored oil train air emissions apply to all existing and proposed oil export terminals and rail operations, and I encourage citizens to begin monitoring them right away. Congress passed the Hazardous Materials Safety and Security Reauthorization Act of 2005, which authorized FRA rail inspectors to deal with imminent hazards. This law was kicked down to the DOT Pipeline and Hazardous Materials Safety Administration, which stalled it by pushing, publishing a notice of rulemaking on October 2nd, 2008, but the final rule hasn't been published yet nearly 10 years later. Why? If the government won't do the monitoring, then the citizens are forced to take action. Vancouver Action Network is preparing to monitor these emissions and will be submitting our data to FSEC and all interested parties around the world in an effort to protect all rail site communities from being vaporized by the next exploding oil train. Fan scientists will be following swift, strict quality control and quality assurance measures, including videotaping our monitoring activities and posting videos on YouTube. We use the uh, public light, uh, public lab light spectrometer, the FLIR gas miner, harbor hydrocarbon viewing camera, and the bucket brigade air sampler. We will not trespass on any railroad property or touching any equipment. We invite any supportive citizens and regulators to monitor with us and to set up parallel monitoring. Uh, we're, we're changing this fight from a defensive one to an offensive one. We have science, existing regulation, and public opinion on our side. With a meager monitoring budget of $2,000, VAN will shut down this proposed terminal project until baseline emissions monitoring is finished. We will also end all oil by rail transportation in its current dangerous form. This will cost the oil and rail companies billions and billions of dollars in downtime as new pressurized oil cars are built. <coughs> And so we're basically asking that uh, people that are invested in these companies sell, sell, sell before the bottom drops out. So um, I'm just asking people to uh, join us and you can find out more information by going to Vancouver Action Network at blogspot.com.